In this video, I will explain federated learning in a way that even a high school student can understand it easily. Let's say there is a bank which has loan departments for auto loans, home loans, education loan and so on. Now, in these banks, these departments often work in silos and they don't share data with the other department. Let's say all these three departments are training a machine learning model to predict a credit risk. In any bank, when they give a loan, they want to figure out if the person will be able to repay the loan or not. And that you can measure using a machine learning model that predicts a credit risk. Let's say these three departments have their own data set using which they are training a model. Let's say they are using neural network with bunch of features such as person's loan to income ratio, age, their demographics various factors and they are predicting whether this person will be able to repay the loan or not and these models are trained separately the data set is something that they cannot share with each other due to compliance reasons and by the way i'm not making this up i have a friend who is a senior data scientist working for a bank and they actually have this scenario and they use federated learning so the purpose of using federated learning is to learn from each other. Let's say for home loan department, they have some 50,000 records with variety of features. Let's say here they have some 30,000 records and here they have some 20,000 records. Now you all know that machine learning models, when they get more data, they tend to get better. So the question is, how do you utilize all these records and build a central model where you're not sharing the actual data set because otherwise it is violating your privacy concern. So how do you do that? Well, you can do that using federated learning. Now you need to have some idea on neural networks because we are using neural network as an example. You can use any statistical machine learning model, right? Like a random forest as well. But here I'm using neural network example. And for that, you need to have some understanding. So I have this deep learning playlist. You can refer to it, but just to give you a brief understanding, when you are training a neural network model, and let's say if you have 30,000 records, you pass these uh, records and it's a supervised learning. So for this 30,000 records, you will know whether the person is defaulting on a loan or not. And based on that, you train a neural network uh, and then you use gradient descent to pass the errors back, okay? And when you do back propagation of these errors, you are computing something called gradient or update to the weights okay so in the neural network there are weights and when you are doing training you are updating those weights and that delta or that gradient is something i have indicated with this orange lines okay so when you use this gradients to train a centralized server okay so let's say you have these three individual models for auto car education etc you are training them and whatever gradients you are getting as part of the training so remember these are not weights okay these are not the weights of neural network these are the gradients or the updates that you are getting while training this network if you feed these updates to a centralized model and you just aggregate them so let's say this update that i'm getting is three this update is two and let's say this update is five so five three eight two ten so then you do the average so 10 divided by three whatever that number is that's the update that you will be applying to uh, this particular weight here in the neural network so i hope you're getting a point you're training your individual models and you are passing updates not the weights or not the actual data set because actual data set you are violating privacy concern you are sending those updates to the centralized server and that way this centralized server is powerful it has the view of all these three data sets and you can send that model back to these individual models so now this model centralized model is much powerful than these individual models and you deploy these models into these uh, departments. Now let's say this department once again, they are getting more records and they are doing more training. You do this iteratively. So again, this home loan department will train this particular local, uh, this local uh, neural network on their individual records. Let's say they get 10,000 more records. They will train it 
they again send the update to centralized server and so on they keep on doing this repetitively and that way this central server or centralized model keeps on getting better and better now here you are preserving your privacy you are not sharing these records between each department and yet you are creating a model which is powered by the individual data sets from all three departments. Google's keyboard, which is known as Gboard, uses federated learning for next word prediction. So when I say, can we have a quick, you know, it predicts the next word call, correct? You might have seen that if you have an Android phone, when you type something, it is recommending the next word. For this, it is using federated learning. And the way it works is, when you have your individual phones, those phones will have local model and those models when they are getting trained they send the updates or the gradients to the centralized model and once centralized model is trained that model is copied back to your local phone and this keeps on happening and in aggregate your individual models or individual experience for next word uh, prediction uh, gets improved so this animation kind of shows that so there are three phones and when you're typing that data is private correct that data is something you don't want to share with others but you are sharing the updates so these orange boxes that you're seeing they are the individual models these green boxes are the updates then centralized server got trained and now it is sending those blue update uh, back to the individual phones there is a research paper from google google invented this federated learning uh, I'm going to link the copy of this research paper in the video description. So please check it out. And I hope this video gave you a good understanding of what is federated learning. It is being used in banks. It is being used in uh, Google Gboard. There are variety of use cases where you have individual data sets in either individual departments or individual phones, individual I IoT devices and you have local models you don't want to share your data set which is private to other models but you can share the gradient or the updates in the model and you can have a centralized server and everyone else will benefit right so as you can see in this picture when you have a central model every single mobile phone benefits without sharing their private data all right i hope you get some clarity if you have any question there is a comment box below